Hi, I'm Jim Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this game from Division P of TSEC 18. And it's a very big game with Stockfish against Ali Stein. These are two of the favourites in the race for the super final. And here we get a fascinating game with Stockfish as white, Ali Stein as black. And the really fascinating thing was the end game of this game. We have a Sicilian rouser and Stockfish finds a double exchange sack for positional compensation. You can see that Stockfish will get back one of the exchanges, but the other is a long-term exchange and we get to a position where white has queen and bishop and a couple of extra pawns against a queen and rook. And what we're going to look into in detail is just how white gets the queen and bishop so active and dangerous in the end game. And Stockfish has a really good understanding and a good evaluation of the end game throughout. Yeah, it's a really, really wonderful game. A you know, huge matchup, of course. So, uh, well, let's have a little look. Well, I'll just take you back through the, um, uh, through the opening moves. So um, that was e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, takes, takes. Knight f6, knight c3, d6, bishop c4, line I've played myself, actually, and queen b6, which is uh, a Benko system. Um, just uh, forcing the knight away from the center so that that's one less attacking piece uh, close to the opponent's king. Does lose a tempo, the queen will get hit later, but um, you're saying that uh, that tempo loss is less important than driving a piece away from the, uh, from the center. Um, and after castles a6, then those were the, the last moves of the, uh, of the T-Sec book. Um, so now the engines are on their own and they can do what they want. Exactly. Um, I mean, in some ways, um, Ali Stein's been given a bit of a leg up because um, uh, Stockfish hasn't been allowed to castle King Queen side from the uh, from the book. So uh, at least the attack is going to come a little bit slower. You know, Stockfish is really absolutely phenomenal in uh, in open Sicilians. It makes a huge score with them. So um, a4, bishop d7, a5, driving the queen away from um, from b6 and tying down the uh, the black queen side. So, you know, get, exploiting something at least from, uh, from Black's uh, move queen b6. And now f4. Um, possible now because the queen has left the, uh, the a7 g1 diagonal. And here Ali played, I suppose, a little strangely. Um, yeah, I, I would really expect Black to play bishop b7 and castles quickly and uh, then sort of uh, try and see where, where life is, uh, is, is, is coming. But um, they played... Um, well, at least a number of moves that, that I wouldn't really have wanted to play. Um, rook c8, not sure about that one. The bishop retreats to e2, just getting out of, the, of a possible attack. Knight b4, which um, seems a little bit early to me. Quite... Yeah, because we know that Black really wants to go bishop e7 in castles. Uh, so doing that straight away then will give Black a little bit more choice seeing how the position develops. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I suppose, I mean, I, I imagine that um, that if um, Ali had played bishop e7 and castles, white might have gone a quick g4 to g5. But, I mean, that that's coming anyway, really. You know, it's it's sort of, it's just these moves, uh, you'll just see what I mean. Um, bishop b3 and now queen b8 very early as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. The pieces feel feel rather strange there. That's just, uh, and uh, Stockfish exploited this quite nicely. It played f5 and after bishop b7, took on e6 very quickly. Um, and the idea of this is that after f takes e5, there's the, the unpleasant move, bishop g5, um, castles, there's e5. And now you notice that this queen is on, um, well, a rather poor square b8, because if d takes e5, we just take on f6 and then take the loose bishop on d7, which would be protected if the queen was on c7. So um, um, at, at the very least, you can say that um, you know, Stockfish has just uh, well spotted the drawback to, uh, to Black's uh, form of development. So Black takes back with the, the bishop on e6, um, which leads to some sort of Skaveningen, um, uh, Nidorf uh, type of structure, uh, just with a couple of um, funny points for, uh, for Black. The queen is on b8, 
the knight's on b4 when it would really rather be on e5. So um, it's actually quite a nice version for white. And uh, well, Stockfish exploits this quite nicely. Knight f5, uh, threatening to take on e7, and then uh, pin the knight with bishop g5. So black has to give up its light squared bishop. Um, yeah, it happens in these types of positions, but obviously always quite nice, I feel, for, uh, for white. Um, and then uh, Ali, well, redeployed its knight. That knight is trying to head back towards uh, e5. But in general, white's, you know, a number of tempi up, basically, on a normal um, uh, Sicilian, knight or Sicilian like this. So um, doing pretty well. So can you see the double exchange that that's about to happen? Yes, well, <laughs> kind of telegraphing it there. It's um, indeed. So here Stockfish played um, uh, a nice move. It's not uh, complicated. Um, the, uh, the nice thing about it is the, is the judgment afterwards, actually, a judgment of the position. Uh, so rook takes f6, um, bishop takes f6, rook takes f6 again, takes and knight d5. And um, well, black can't actually defend the pawn on d8 because if uh, queen d8, we've got bishop b6 just chasing the, uh, the queen away from in the defense there. So um, black plays queen c8, we go knight takes f6, check, king h8, and then bishop d4. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, it's pretty clear that, um, well, we can always take on e8, of course, but the queen's coming into h6. So, um, you know, this is uh, pretty powerful. Rook e6, queen h6, check, not check. Rook takes, queen takes check. King g8, queen takes d6, and now f6. So, uh, well, the smoke has cleared a little bit, and white's got two bishops and um, uh, two pawns for the exchange. So pretty good, uh, yeah, pretty pretty good uh, result for, for white there, really. Um, and, um, Matthew and I were talking about this position, and uh, I think we were both thinking, oh, yeah, we'd, the white would want to keep the bishop pair um but actually stockfish decides to and then so keep the bishop pair and not take the extra pawn but actually stockfish takes a different decision here yeah i mean i, I wouldn't be um you know at all surprised if um oops sorry if um if white played uh, for example c3 in this position and just tried to uh, uh to keep his two bishops and uh with two pawns you know then uh, consolidate his king and then try and uh, make something of that that wouldn't have uh, surprised me at all but Stockfish indeed took on e5 uh, and took this extra pawn. Um, and we reached the following position. Check, queen e7, king h8. Now just bear with me, I'll just move forward a few moves to, uh, to one uh, position that I want to, uh, gives us the sort of the basis of the whole thing. And then afterwards I'll move back and look at some possibilities that occurred along the way. So the, the game continued g3, rook g7, queen b4, Queen c6, some slightly mysterious moves, but we'll understand them a bit later. Queen d4 and queen c7. And, um, well, in this position, uh, uh, Leo Lubicic, um, who's a uh, former world correspondence uh, champion, uh, I think 2016 he was uh, world correspondence champion and a uh, well, very keen TCC watcher, he, um, he tweeted this position and said, uh, uh, asked for grandmaster evaluation. So um, um, what, what was this position? Was it a draw or was it a win for white? Um, and uh, I think I was one of the quickest to respond. And I tended to, to think it would be a draw. Um, white has got three pawns for the, um, uh, for the exchange, which is great. But actually, uh, white's position is quite stretched. And uh, well, a5 and c2 are attacked at the moment. And I didn't think it would be possible for, uh, for white to keep uh, his third extra pawn. So then white was only going to have uh, two pawns. And I tended to think that, um, um, that it would be a, a very tough ask uh, for white to well, both create threats against the, um, um, against the black king and also stop the black queen from giving perpetuals because the white king is quite open after all. Um, I don't think it was an, an unreasonable uh, um, opinion, but um, actually as uh, uh, Stockfish demonstrates, um, uh, the activity and the power of the queen and bishop, able both to attack the black king and defend the white king as well, is quite extraordinary. Um, really, uh, to be honest, beyond uh, what, I, what, I, what, I, what I really thought was possible. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, for me, this has become, it's really 
this is my model game now. If uh, you know, if you're looking at uh, at uh, at how powerful can a queen and bishop be, uh, you know, against a queen and rook. But um, that's the, the general point. Now let's just have a look at a few specific points in this position because you might well have noticed and uh, and uh, even seen that the arrow was pointing to this move: queen takes c2. And indeed, at various stages, Ali could have taken the, the pawn on c2, but chose not to. Um, and uh, what's the reason for this? Um, well, the reason, um, I think, was that the, uh, the NNs were, were, were actually you know, quite pessimistic about this position. So queen check, rook check, queen check, rook check, queen check, rook check, queen check. Very, very typical, by the way, this, um, this maneuver. Um, the, just the, um, the ability of the queen to reposition uh, with check, so without losing any time, is um, is extremely uh, extremely important in these types of positions, because after rook g seven you go bishop c four, and um, I think this is the first general important point to notice that simply the rook on g seven alone cannot keep the um, uh, the uh, uh, the white queen and bishop at bay. You know that it just it just can't. It needs the queen always to uh, to help in the defence. And that means that giving perpetual checks for uh, for black is actually a lot more difficult than you'd think, simply because the queen can never afford to be away from the um, uh, from the um, uh, uh, back rank for too long. So here, queen c1 check, king g2, queen g5 was um, uh, was what I, I was looking at. Um, and now we've got a few games I can show you, some uh, between um, engines and some where I was trying to defend the black side against Komodo 14. Um, and uh, well, you can see how uh, how abysmally that failed. Um, now, for su for some reasons, the uh, the engines all wanted to play b3. Um, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a bit a bit strange. I mean, b4 just looks very natural. Um, in actual fact, um, it is a kind of a trap because if queen a5, we go queen d6, and um, well, black's queen can no longer get to the back rank, so white's actually just completely winning. Queen f8 check coming in, but. Um, um, so black was tending to play h5 in the engine games. Bishop e6. A very nice move, this one, bishop e6. It um, um, possibly aims for f5, but it covers this whole diagonal here. So if black were to play h4, you can just play g4 um, and always hide the king on h3. Alpha zero style, actually, to be honest. And, um, and then the pawn on h4 will fall. Um, so... Um, um, so black tends not to do that. King h7 was what uh, black was doing. Bishop f5 check, king h8. And, but now you realise um, just how difficult um, and how, well, yeah, how difficult this position is to defend for black. White goes queen c3, threatening queen c8 check, rook g8, queen takes b7. The queen comes back to d8, and then the white queen comes to c1. And all of a sudden it's impossible for black to stop this move for uh, queen h6. Uh, because if you do something like, for example, queen f6, I'll just go queen c8 check and queen b7, and I've picked up another pawn. Life goes on, but now, uh, you know, I've got, uh, um, well, I've got my, uh, I've got three pawns again for uh, for the exchange. Because that h pawn, now it's gone forward a bit, is actually, will be easier for white to pick up with some checks. So. Exactly, and, and it's on a light square as well, so it can be a combined attack with um, with bishop and queen. I mean... This was actually one of the things that I spend uh, uh, in my games against Komodo, which I can show you now. I mean, what I was really thinking was, um, I mean, I need to move that H pawn to give myself some space, but I really wanted to just move it to H6, you know, not make a target and just give myself a little bit of room. Um, and, um, well, I spent a, you know, a little while preparing this and then played Komodo, but it did not work out well for me. And what Komodo was doing all the time, which was um, a very strong plan, was to play e5. Um, I mean, I kind of thought that this was um, this was going to be all right for black because um, when well now the the pawns are blocking uh, the attack on the rook on g7, so potentially that one can move. And when I go e5 to e6, then the the attack of the bishop on the g8 square is blocked. So you know, I thought this might work out quite well for me, uh, but it, um, but it didn't. Um, so uh, I think the one attempt was uh, queen e7. I tried. Uh, queen f4, attacking h6 again, this very annoying move. Um, and if I play a queen g5, then there's queen f8 check, king h7, bishop d3. 
Um, I will say that until you've actually tried defending this yourself, you won't just cannot realize how many tactics there are in the position and how many ways there are to lose stuff. Um, so I went rook g6 and white went e6. King g7, queen e5 check. Um, and then the first game I played uh, rook f6. The second game I played uh, king g8. That was just, uh, I thought, well, rook f6 didn't work out very well. I'll play there. But uh, this was a, an incredible idea, queen d4, with the idea that rook g7 is met by queen d8 check. And uh, queen d8 is uh, e7, and uh, king h7 is bishop d3 check. So, you know, very, very unpleasant, this. Um, when I went rook f6, white just played h4 and g4. And uh, again, just so hard for black to create any sort of play. Queen d8, g5, takes, takes, bishop e2, and uh, I was completely lost. Uh, rook check, queen h8, king e7, queen h7. King d8, vaguely hoping for um, uh, for some checks after queen takes g6, but e7 check just um, just wins completely. Either if king d7, I can just uh, throw this one in and then take the rook with check afterwards and then protect my bishop. So, what you know, what's the conclusion about that? I mean, the conclusion simply is that Taking on c2, this position with um, um, with a, a white pawn on on a5 is quite strong for um, uh, for white, um, you know, which is uh, which is, is fair enough, I think. So, um, what Ali tried to do was not take the pawn on c2, but it played this move queen c6. And if you think about you know the big problem of uh, of, of black's position in all those variations. It's that the rook was being pinned by the by the queen on d4. So actually, Ali was looking to play queen f6 here, um, not taking a pawn back, but covering that diagonal and then freeing the rook for activity, which you know is probably a decent idea. And that's why Stockfish went queen d4, and then Ali still didn't take the pawn on c2 and played queen c7. Now, I mean, I do think that um, you know if White played b4 um, in this position, well, Ali would probably have to take on c2. And, um, you know, we're back into the positions that we've analysed, which I do think are very, very strong for white. Um, but um, Stockfish took uh, an exceptional decision here, and it was actually very, very interesting. Stockfish played the move C3. And um, I think, you know, if memory serves me right, um, the evaluation of the MNs and, uh, and Stockfish was quite similar up till now. Um, it's about plus 1.2 for, uh, for white. But after this move, allowing queen takes a5, um, the NNs um, and also this human GM, um, <laughs> their evaluations both um, both dropped significantly. I think the NNs went down to about plus 0.6, whereas, of course, you know, um, uh, Stockfish's evaluation stayed the same and actually just, you know, kept on increasing from now on. Um, and that's, that actually maybe tells you something fundamental about the position that presumably, you know, the NNs felt that, um, yeah, the queen and bishop, um, that they had good activity, so that was worth something in the position. But that was, that was, that was one of the key factors was that this pawn was on a5, tying down these pawns on a6 and b7, you know, which is you know fantastic for endings, of course, as we've discussed. So that was so White's advantage basically was uh, um, was made up of two parts, you know, a big positional advantage, this pawn tying down the queen side pawns on light squares, and also the activity of the queen and bishop. Um, and when one of those factors disappeared for the NNs, the, the advantage had been, you know, greatly reduced. But Stockfish just seemed to put it all on the dynamic factors. You know, the um, the Queen and Bishop are superbly active. You won't be able to get free of them. So that's worth the whole position. And that pawn on A5, the um, the restricted pawns on B7 and A6, they're just not important. And um, yeah, I mean, I think, I'd, I mean, looking at the game, I think Stockfish was completely right. But uh, it does take... Um, uh, it takes a huge amount of uh, of, of skill to, uh, to 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 prove that you know it's uh... maybe Stockfish has calculated a long way ahead as well and can kind of see those factors playing out in the position. Yeah, I mean Stockfish must be finding you know concrete lines in which um, the queen and bishop are just always too strong for the queen and rook. Um, but I have to say, if, you know, from a human point of view, I'd say, oh, ooh, this this is uh, you know, if if you just showed me this position, actually, I'd sort of say, oh. I'm sure, you know, especially in an engine, uh, engine against engine, that uh, the black can hold this, you know. But, um, but actually, it's, you know, it's very hard to find, uh, you know, any point really where, um, where you say, oh, yeah, black could have held this. 
This is just really very unpleasant for black. So let's see how Stockfish did it. Bishop c4 um, and Queen c7. Um, and again, another fundamental point here. Queen a1 check, King g2, Queen b2 check, King h3 is completely winning for uh, for white because, um, well, the, the queen can't get back to defend uh, the back rank. So, um, um, so black had to play queen c7. Uh, and then bishop d5. A very nice move. If the queen um, uh, sort of leaves the, uh, the defense of the b7 pawn, then bishop b7 will always be a threat. We'll see that a few times just because the rook on, on g7 is pinned. Yeah, and you notice that the rook, the rook can't move, it's pinned, and the king also has no moves at all. So in our Game Changer book, we, uh, we, we looked at lots of positions where one of the kings had very restricted mobility and, and the, the problems that causes, and here it's both the king and the rook have no mobility at all for black. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's, it must be a you know, huge advantage in mobility for white. Um, yeah, I think, I think, did I try, I think I tried staying still against uh, Komodo as well here. I tried just to, doing nothing at all with Queen E7. And, um, well, I just gradually, gradually got, um, um, uh, got uh, pinned down. Um, I, I did want to play Queen G5 uh, um, originally, but um, uh, Bishop takes D5 looked, uh, looked rather annoying. Bishop takes B7 rather, rather annoying with a pin there. Queen b5 check is possible, but um, um, did I, I looked at these lines, queen d8 check, queen f6, bishop d5, looked at these endings, um, but I lost this one with, uh, with black, and um, um, I do think it's a very unpleasant one for, um, for black. The king just, uh, just comes in um, and um, you know, helps uh, the b and c pawns advance, and black can try and get the g and h pawns, but he's always too slow. So um, what did I do? I tried uh, just staying still again, just with my, my favorite, oops, with my favorite move, h6. h4, taking away g5 from the queen. I, I can't go queen h4 because of queen takes g7 check, of course. So queen f8, c4, queen e7, e5 again, Komodo playing its favorite move, e6, queen f4. And it's just this point. I mean, you realize at some stage, my goodness, I don't have any moves again. Um, how on earth do I defend this um, uh, this pawn on h6? Well, I tried rook g6. Then uh, Komodo improved its position just a little bit more. And after king h3, I was just completely out of moves. Um, uh, rook g7 will allow queen b8 check. King there, bishop b4 check again. Um, and uh, a move of the queen, of course, allows the e7 check. So, um, well, I went king f8, but this wasn't much better. Queen h8 check, queen h6 check, queen f4 threatening to come into b8, and um, it was pretty much over. Um, so, again, you know, standing still, yeah, white really does have a, a great deal of opportunity to improve its position. So, Ali Stein played queen d7, king g1, um, and then played a5, which I think um, I think got criticised uh, some somewhere, but I wasn't really sure that it made any material difference. Um, uh, it's a decent idea to get a pawn off a light square, so that if white takes on b7, he's not attacking a6. Um, I was looking at playing uh, b5, that was one move, um, just to try and get the bishop completely off the attack of uh, the bishop on d5 and hold back this c pawn as well. Uh, but for example, queen f6 is very unpleasant, threatening queen takes a6 and queen f8 check. So um, Ali played a5, and now some, some just some great queen moves from, um, from Stockfish. So queen e5 now, threatening queen b8 check. So Ali played h6 to give itself a bit of, a bit of room. Queen f6, attacking the pawn on h6. King h7, only way to defend it. Um, and now black is actually threatening to go rook g6, just to, uh, to free its rook. But um, um, yeah, Stockfish played uh, um, a wonderfully calculated move, which was bishop e6. So um, attacking the queen and now rook g6 will always be met by bishop f5. And what you might ask yourself, though, is, well, can't black start doing stuff with, um, uh, with giving checks? But, um, but actually, the, um, the queen and the, uh, and the bishop combine very beautifully to, um, uh, to stop any checks. Um, and black's got to be very careful. I mean, if black, uh, sorry, if black plays queen takes h2, for example, here, 
then this move queen f5 check um, wins on the spot uh, because rook g6 is met by bishop g8 check. So uh, shogi like Natasha said when uh, when we when we looked at this. Diverting the king. Exactly. If king g7, we've got queen f7 and queen h7 mate. And um, if uh, king g8, queen g6 check, this is a, a winning queen and pawn ending. So um, so black can't do that. I mean, one idea I was looking at was to play queen d3 and queen f1 um, and then try and exchange off queens. But this ending actually seems to be winning for white. You've got to be very careful always when you've got a bishop against rook because uh, I remember I, I lost one of these. I think a year of an Olympiad 96 against uh, Spain. I, I was winning, but I, I didn't understand uh, just how, how dangerous things could get for me if the black rook got free. But here the black rook doesn't really get free. Um, we, get, uh, we play c4 and we play bishop d5 and then e5 to e6. And the king's so uh, cut away in the corner there that um, it, um, well, it just never get free. White's just going to be winning. But it's, it's, it's somewhat uh, complicated. You, you could definitely mess this up in time trouble as white, uh, I can tell you. But, um, but it does seem to be winning. Um, the, probably the best defensive line uh, I found looking at it with the engines was to play um, queen d6 check, king e3, queen c5 check. Um, and um, well, we got we were getting to this sort of position with the uh, with the engines here, queen e5, queen h5, check, king f8, and um, well, white has lost another pawn, so white's got three pawns for the uh, exchange. The one thing though is that the black king's got a little bit out of the corner there, so um, the white the black rook is going to get freer, and of course, um, well, black's queen is also free; it's not tied down to the back rank anymore. So there's possibility for perpetuals. This was kind of um, this was leading some draws in my uh, in my engine matches, uh, but I certainly wouldn't fancy trying to defend this as uh, as black myself. You know, it's uh, some of the positions that uh, where Stockfish was uh, saying, "Aha!" and now I've reached zero zero zero. It's a dead draw. You know, frankly, I was looking at it and thinking, "My goodness, it looks completely lost to me." You know, some sort of uh, queen and rook against bishop and queen bishop and three pawn positions. But this might be uh, might have been um, you know a, a better way of defending maybe. Um, Ali Stein played h5, and now some fantastic calculation again from Stockfish. Queen e5, beautiful centralization, threatening queen takes h5 check, but black can play queen h2, and just uh, defend the pawn and take a pawn back. And White's only got one pawn for the for the bishop now, for the exchange. But um, we get this move, bishop f5 check, queen b8, and now this beautiful quiet move, queen d6. And uh, threatening queen h6, and um, um, also preventing the black queen from coming round to d2 to cover h6. And the rook is not able to, uh, to defend against the queen and bishop on its own. So rook g7, I've just got check, check, and mate, for example. So um, the only way to do it is a very clever way. There's a whole sequence of checks for black in order to get its queen back uh, onto defensive duties. And uh, that's check, 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 check. Made it, queen c6, covering h6 by, um, by uh, covering the sixth rank. And I can tell you if this happened to me in a blitz game, I'd be thinking I've messed up as white. There we are, messed it up. Black's uh, got a defense. Uh, but this is the moment where, you know, Stockfish is uh, getting more and more confident. Queen check. Again, black has to self-pin. Bishop e6. Uh, you'll just notice here that, um, um, that um, well, white has, has tempted forward this h, this h pawn now. So it's now a very easy target for the, uh, for the white queen. So black plays queen e8. And then um, Stockfish puts its king safe very calmly. King b3, b5, king c2. And if you showed me this position, you know, and said, uh, right, how's it going? Uh, and especially knowing the position before, I would have said, well, you know, black's done quite well, really. Got, uh, you know, a couple of pawns back and, uh, okay, white's very active, but, um, you know, might not be able to win it, but, um, you know, should be, uh, you know, well, well done, black. Um, but when you start to look at the position just a little bit closely, you suddenly realize how utterly constricted black is because it's much harder to find, um, it's much easier to find a move that loses material than a move that um, that doesn't. Um, for example, um, well, the rook obviously can't move. King h7 loses uh, to bishop f5 check. 
Um, a move like um, queen e7 um, allows queen h5, queen b8 check, bishop f5, check, and queen h4 mate. You notice the clever point of taking on h5 first in order to free up the h file for this little checkmate. Um, so very, very difficult indeed um, to, to do anything at all. Um, the best line that the engines found was, um, um, uh, was to play h4. G takes h4. Um, why do you do that? The idea is that um, at least um, if the queen moves from e5 at some stage, you'll get some activity for the rook with rook g2. That's why you're doing that. And then queen d8, um, just giving up this um, uh, this pawn on uh, on b5. And um, well, I mean, you're getting to positions with queen, bishop, and three pawns um, against queen and rook. You know, the the h pawn and the a pawn get uh, get traded. And well, Stockfish was managing to hold some of these as black, but was also losing some as well. So basically, it's um, it's a pretty tough ask, but maybe not completely, completely lost. Um, I don't think a human would stand much chance of uh, of holding it, though. There's just so many tactics. But what um, what Ali did was uh, a very natural move, uh, b4, um, and you know opens up some um, some some checks against the uh, the white king. Uh, but again, Stockfish had calculated this absolutely beautifully. So c4, a4, c5. Uh, I mean, basically, that pawn is just going to queen. Um, and it can also be used as a little decoy uh, at some stage. For example, c6, drag the queen away from e8, and then take this one with check, for example. Um, and here, Ali played um, h4. Um, I was looking at queen b5 here, um, just trying to make this work. Um, but white plays queen h5 check. Queen e5 check again, and then plays this great move g4. Um, oh, it was my idea, actually. I, yeah, I, I was looking at that. That's right. And uh, the idea is just to put the pawn to um, to g6 and then give a check on h2 and just um, make the black king. Um, and the, the confusing... Sorry? It looks a reasonable plan. It, look, it looks a reasonable plan. I mean, the, the key thing is that if queen, e, um, if, uh, queen e2 check, we just go king b1, queen d1 check, king a2. You'll notice how beautifully this bishop on e6 covers the, the b3 square, so there's no queen b3 check. And if b3, king a3, um, well, you could give another check if you particularly want. Um, and then you're just going to get mated with, you know, queen b8 check or a queen h5 check. So, um, again, it's that, that terrible thing for black that um, you just can't... Um, uh, leave your queen away from the back rank too too long, which just makes it really hard to get perpetual checks. So what was I looking at? Um, a3 was another idea, g5, queen check, king b1, and then this ending, uh, not that, um, this ending, takes takes, and c6. And actually th this um, this is just um, losing for, uh, for black. I'm threatening bishop d7 and um, uh, Otherwise, I'm just going to play king b2, take the pawn on b4, and then come in with my king. And the black king can't stop all the white pawns. So this is uh, um, uh, not what uh, what black can do. Um, in the game, Ali played h4. Again, just trying to get that rook on g7 active at some stage, maybe. Um, and played queen f8. So actually just waiting for that pawn to arrive. Queen f8, queen d8. Um, and here... Um, another stellar move from uh, from Stockfish. I mean, um, you sort of look at the game, you look at the move sometimes, say, oh, it won, that must have been uh, easy, very good. But this was really, um, this is quite an extraordinary idea again that Stockfish comes up with. So he plays this move, bishop d7, which, um, well, blocks off the d-file um, and, and gives the, the white king a bridge to move over to d3. Um, and what is white's king doing? Well, one thing it might possibly be doing is just moving up to c4, c5, and just supporting the c-pawn. So if black starts giving checks, that's exactly what white will do. Um, the funny point about it is, though, is that, um, well, after a3, we take, take, and white plays this move, king e2. And it's really funny, isn't it? Because um, um, white's, you know, spent a few moves preparing to transfer the king over to e2, whilst black is pushing its queenside pawns to create a passed pawn. Seems completely crazy, but uh, the king's actually just very safe on e2. No checks from the uh, black queen anymore. Uh, no checks from the black rook because of the pin. And um, um, and here with bishop e6, 
again, we, now uh, the bishop's done its duty, creating that bridge for the white king, can just get back to uh, controlling controlling uh, the black king and also the, the pawn on a2. Um, yeah, the situation is pretty desperate for black. I mean, moves like king h7, by the way, always fail to queen h5 checkmate. Uh, taking a pawn on h4 uh, will um, will allow uh, uh, the pawn to move on to c7 and queen to c8. So that's why black played a2 and then took the pawn on h4 because at least e, the, the bishop's no longer covering uh, c7. But queen g4 check, king d2, queen d7, queen d7. And here actually, um, Ali Stein resigned, which... Um, um, a strange time. Well, its evaluation, its evaluation was very low and uh, was or was very high for whites, and uh, and stockfishes was very high as well. And uh, past a certain point, uh, you know, they, um, uh, the the uh, the TCC uh, resign rule uh, kicks in. Um, it is actually a win, although it's still pretty complicated, I have to say. So, um, Bishop D five is the move. Um, the simple point is that the C seven pawn is taboo, because I can just go check King H seven forced. Queen h5 mate, gorgeous geometry again. So that is clear. Um, the question is, how are you going to finish this off? In principle, you're going to finish it off by moving the king up to support the c pawn and then playing a move like bishop b6 or bishop b7. Um, the precise engine line, the main line, was um, bishop f7, queen g7 check, king e3, very nice. Queen f7 allows c8. Um, queen h3 check, king d4, queen d7, king c5. Queen g4, king d6, queen d1, bishop d5. Yeah, you'd be a little bit nervous in, uh, in a time scramble, but, um, uh, but for the engines, it's all fine. Bishop b6, queen d1, and queen d5. And, uh, well, there's no more checks, and c7 to c8 is unstoppable. So, uh, yeah, this is now uh, really winning. Even I can see this now. So that was that game. A real heavyweight encounter, I think you'll agree. Um, uh, I, I think just um, really um, marked by, you know, the double exchange sacrifice by uh, Stockfish. Well, there was some great opening play from Stockfish, I think. Uh, this f5 takes e6 was great. The double exchange sacrifice was, was good, although you know, not, not so complicated. Certainly not for Stockfish, but I think even for, you know, for a human grandmaster. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, the Stockfish's evaluation and understanding of this... Um, uh, this queen and bishop versus queen and rook position was uh, was was quite extraordinary, and um, in particular this this real this decision just to give away the a pawn and rely completely on dynamic factors. You know the 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 ability of the queen and bishop to consistently tie down the queen and rook. You know despite all Black's attempts like h6, h5, anything like that, really quite extraordinary. You know really very very impressive, and um, and quite interesting to see how um, how for the NNs you know. The advantage was this combination of uh, some positional factors and some dynamic, whereas for Stockfish, Stockfish just put everything on the dynamic, and that turned out to be absolutely, um, absolutely correct and absolutely uh, uh, fine. And um, yeah, I mean, just uh, all the way, some uh, some fantastic, um, some fantastic calculation there. You know, just uh, this move, Bishop e6, allowing uh, the Queen to come in with check. Uh, this move, Queen d6 quiet you know threatening mate and um um and then uh yeah the uh, uh the uh the next stages where in this type of position where uh essentially black is just paralyzed you know and uh it just takes you as a, as a human it takes you a little bit of time before you actually spot you know just how bad this is for uh, for black really amazing game really really superhuman play i think you can say so there we are i hope you enjoyed it um um, lots more games, hopefully, uh, by us, covering uh, Division P and then eventually the Super Final. Looks like Stockfish is, uh, is really going to be in there. And then it's a question of uh, who's, which of the NNs is going to make it. Leela's very... Leela, Ali Stein. Or Stoflace, yeah. Top three going for that spot. Exactly. I mean, Leela, Leela's uh, very, very solid, but uh, finding it hard to make um, uh, a lot of impression uh, on, uh, on games at the moment. Um, Ali Stein um, playing very well, actually. Um, uh, a bit unlucky, actually, in, in some other games against Stockfish. Could easily have um, have, uh, have made a point there, but just ended up losing this one against Stockfish. 
Um, and then Stout Flace is, um, well, a lot more up and down, uh, very, very capable of beating the, um, um, of beating machines, you know, with, um, I think we feel, I feel, you know, always with either colour, but also capable of having a disaster from time to time. So, um, yeah, lots of interesting characters there in the, uh, in, in the fight for, uh, for second place. I think it's going to be Leela again. Do you think so? I'm, I'm secretly rooting for Stout Flace, actually, but, um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, um, I think uh, probably uh, you know, Leela would be the one you'd uh, you put your house on probably if uh, you know if you had to uh, if you had to choose. So there we are. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Please subscribe. It's uh, and otherwise, well, see you around for the next video. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching.